Okay, so real quick, I am going to uh, show you how to make a Mandalorian in D&D &D 5e. You're going to need to make sure you have uh, the uh, Eberron rising from the ashes of the last war, or rising from the last war, and uh, the player's handbook to be able to make this. I don't have the player's handbook in D&D &D Beyond, I do have it on print, so part of this you're going to have to trust me on. Just because the uh, the race is the variant human, which is not in the basic rule set. So, uh, so your race is human, human, and we're gonna have two plus ones in ability scores and one skill proficiency. Um, we're gonna hold on to those. We'll grab them later. And starting off, and your class is gonna be artificer. Artificer. I spelled that wrong. Yeah, I totally spelled that wrong. Okay, so we also need to know the state. We're going to run the standard array for our ability scores. Uh, first thing, the lowest is going to be strength. Actually, no, our, our strength is going to be 10. We're going we're gonna to put our, our 10 on strength because we don't want him weak, but he doesn't necessarily need to be strong. He needs to be fairly agile and definitely smart at least st statistically I mean you can really role play him however you like but statistically he's gonna need to be mostly intelligence we're gonna need 15 which we're gonna bump into a 16 with one of his plus ones um, dexterity we're gonna run a 14 yeah that's where his 14 is gonna run constitution wisdom and charisma now uh, I'm gonna dump him into eight wisdom, cause you know, generally he's a bounty hunter. Actually, no, 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 no. Actually, definitely not. Not no. Eight charisma, which doesn't make much sense to be honest. But it's kind of the weakest stat we have here. Like, there is no other stat I can th think of. Uh, wisdom. Now that you look at it, it actually does need to be fairly high, at least a twelve. Okay, so we have the 8, our 10, our 15, our 14. Now we just have a 12 and a 13 left. A 13, we're going to bump up to a 14, so we'll have two 14s. Total. Alright. So we either have the 12 or the Constitution. I'm going to actually say that, because this guy's more of a combat guy, 12 in Wisdom, and then his 14 is going to be in Constitution, because he's definitely going to want to be alive you know and one, and negative one charisma he's not he's not the best okay and all right so next our armor class maximum hit points I'm not even going to bother with most of this because we're going to be just kind of leveling through him and explaining how he's going to go through. Uh, starting off, we're going to have a... Alright, so we're running through the Artificer. How... Real quick, let's run the... Alright, so let me see. Okay. 8 plus Constitution modifier for your hit points. So, max hit points is 10, and proficiencies, copy these, paste them here, uh, and let me see, he has constitution and intelligence. Choose two from Arcana, History, Investigation, Medicine, Nature, Perception, and Sleight of Hand. More of a Bounty Hunter, gonna go Perception, uh, and Medicine, Nature, History, Arcana. We'll go with Arcana for that. And then, um, hmm, Survival, because we do want to be able to track things down, and tracking is generally a survival skill, so that's gonna be a three. A three and a five. So we did dump wisdom a little bit more than quite necessary, but 
we do want him he's more of a combat focus than anything else was the way I wanted to put him together anyway so this works out in general alright studded leather armor real quick that way we can just look at the stats so we're gonna have 12 plus your cons plus your dex modifier this is actually light armor but he can wear he does have proficiency in medium armor so 14 14 for now but he will go up into but if he ever goes up oh skill mail sorry I didn't realize I had skill mail I did not see that I am so stupid okay so 16 I think half plate would be generally like what he'd actually end up running by the time you're done with it and half plate is I think it's 15 plus de plus 2 for dex so anyway 16 armor class pretty damn good pretty good especially considering this is actually going to be more of a ranged character than anything else a light crossbow and 20 bolts light crossbow which is going to be 1d Copy, paste, copy, paste, and attack bonus is profici proficiency plus modifier, four, oh no, type that wrong, four, no, and then this is also, it's a plus two. Felt like that was weird. Off oh, for a second. Do 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 do. Why do I have that open? I don't know why I have that open. Whatever. Okay. Thieves' tools and a dungeoneer pack. Also in our equipment. Copy and any two simple weapons of your choice. Dagger. That's about it, really. I don't think I'd give it another. Just two daggers. Four, one D four plus two, and then equipment paste to enter passive perception. That's like ten plus one, so we go eleven. Uh, right. Other than that, we're also going to have. Uh, his spell once we get to this point once we get to that point we start learning cantrips all right so first first level we're gonna start with our cantrips are gonna be firebolt with a five one d ten and this is basically we're gonna run a wand and just kind of firebolt things and that's kind of gonna be our gun for our uh, artificer it, it's just kind of how he's gonna run you know wait a minute I'm gonna be right back I just realized like despite the fact that I'm kind of trying to do this with my fit I didn't have any of that on one second you know I thought that was on the whole time apparently my face wasn't think now you get to see my beautiful face you, you can thank me um it's probably really badly screened but you know Uh, hopefully that's not fucked. Uh, wait, 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 I'll check, I'll check, I'll check. Yeah, decent enough, fucking. If, if, if I'm lopsided slightly, whatever, you'll, you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So, so where were we, were we so far? Cantrips, right. First one is definitely gonna be Firebolt, and I'm gonna get down to the, uh, uh, spell list real quick so we can run through these. So, Firebolt, and the other one you're gonna want is Mending. copy and scroll down to our spells cantrips is going to be firebolt and oh, whatever mending because some of our other things are actually going to use mending as a as a way to repair certain objects that we're going to use as an artificer uh, most all most of these are also on the 
wizard spell list. But, and speaking of which, the feats that we're picking up is going to be the arcane initiates or magic initiates. I don't remember exactly what it's called. But what it does is it gives you a first level spell once per day. And it also gives you a, uh, it also gives you two cantrips from the spell list that you're choosing and we're going to use wizard and the reason we're using wizard is because despite the fact that he works nearly perfectly until level three you don't have a way to uh cast uh to use a flamethrower so we're gonna run our once a day flamethrower as our first level spell it's uh flame hands Let me pull this out, and actually, let me make sure that I set it right, because like it could be fl uh, burning hands. That's the one. It's not flame hands. It's burning hands. Burning hands once per day, and then other than that, the rest of our spells are going to be the way the spell is runs it, and we get two. Um, Two cantrips from the uh, wizard spell list, which is the most extensive cantrip list out there, really. So, uh, since we already have Firebolt, we already have Mending, let's see if there's anything else particularly that we, we might want to grab. Um, and we have Acid Splash, Blade Ward, Chill Touch, Dancing Lights, Friends, Light. Ma uh, mage hand, mending, message, minor illusion, poison spray, prestigitation, ray of frost, shocking grasp, and true strike. So, I'm thinking we're gonna run something more mechanically themed, but not necessarily. I mean, not necessarily. So we could do other ones. Uh, look at some of these. Maybe we could run one of these and then switch that and say that one, whichever one of those is the. Uh, is the uh, wizard one. Mind you, we can switch out the artificer ones. We cannot switch out the wizard ones once we choose them. So, eh, nothing really there. I'm going to actually say, go with uh, uh, God damn it, I can't remember the name of the damn thing. It's uh, Poison Spray. Because an acid splash yeah poison spray and acid splash because you know you're still very much kind of poisons to knock out your enemies acid because acid's badass poison spray okay and that is all of our cantrips and our one spell from that by the time you get to third level, you'll have another way that you can just keep casting Flamethrower repeatedly. But it's not as cool, and it can it's more versatile, so you can use it in different ways. So I don't necessarily want to use it that way. If I can help it, uh, two first level slots, spell slots, and you know all of these. Okay, so let's read exactly how you, how you cast. Okay. You prepare a number of spells... You prepare the list of artificer spells that are available for you to cast, choosing from the artificer spell list. When you do so, choose a number of spells equal to your intelligence modifier plus half your artificer level rounded down, minimum of one spell. The spell must be of a level for which you have spell slots. So, since we're one, we cannot round down from one, so it's still one. So we And our intelligence modifier is three, so we just prepare four. And it's four of any of these spells. Don't worry, I got you. you we're not going to get a magic missile. It's a little unfortunate, I know. I know. But, you know, we have fi we'll, we'll get firebolt, or fireball, and some other things for uh, rockets later. So don't worry about it too much. Uh, flame arrow. Oh, no, flame arrows. Is a, it, that's, it's a, something's flaming arrow. That's the one we were thinking of. But fly is one of ours, so don't worry. We'll get fly later. Fly will be part of one of our, one of the ones we grab. Um, so we're gonna run featherfall because you know what? You have a jetpack. Uh, Mandalorians have jetpacks. 
you're gonna need a parachute too when you run out of fuel uh <laughs> oh pyrokinesis if i don't remember exactly what this one does pyrokinetics choose an area of non-magical flame you can see within five you can see you can extinguish the flame of the area and create either fireworks or smoke if you do uh okay so blinding and obscuring vision uh, detect magic, disguise self, catapult, cure wounds, alarm. I, I actually definitely go with alarm because you know you're tracking people through the mud and the dust, and you know what? Sometimes you need to be able to take make a camp. Uh, all right, expeditious retreat. Uh, moves at an incredible pace when you cast this spell. Then, as bonus action, on each of your turns until the spell ends, you can taste. The take the dash action so I'd actually put definitely put this one because sometimes you just got to get out of there all right so we have one more spell and you know what let's see if we can get a good an offensive spell are there any of these that are really that good at offense catapult choose one object weighing one to five pounds within range that isn't being worn or carried the object flies into a straight line in 90 feet direction you choose before falling to the ground stopping early if it impacts solid surface and it does a ton of bludgeoning damage. So you know what? We can actually even call that our rocket. If we really want to stretch it. But it is a good way. Like thematically. We just we throw an item and boom. So that's kind of like a grenade even. You could call it. I suppose. More than a rocket. But nonetheless. There you go. And that's your four spell. And that's going to be your four spells. I'm not really going to come back to spells. Even as even even as I kind of level these guys up, this guy up, I'm mainly gonna go through because other than fly, there really isn't any other that's really bit fly and fireball, which you'll get later. There isn't any other that really enhance shows you what you're gonna your artificer is gonna look like, really, you know. So you were not coming back to this, but going back up. Okay, so uh. All right, so magical tinkering. The coolest one that you're really gonna get is a static visual effect. So you like you pull out your pocket watch and it's got the picture of your target on there. Um, it, these are just tinkering little gadgets. You know, you have a flashlight and it can even be like embedded into any of your weapons or anything. Uh, or court emits a recorded message that you can hear it ten feet away, so you can even like record things. Uh, or you utter the message when you bestow the property, so you can like make weird noises and. Emits an odor or non-verbal sound. These are just cool little trinket type things you can do. And all of them kind of enhance the very engineering aspect of the artificer. But they can also kind of look futuristic and bounty hunter-y. If you flavor them right in roleplay. Okay. Do -do -do. Infuse item. At second level you're going to start learning infusions. Uh... Let me look at the table real quick, just to make sure that by the time we're third level... Because really, once you're third level, you're pretty much complete. Infusion's known, still four. Infused items, still two. And the most you're going to run is three spells per... Or spell slots. So, until you hit... And really, fly isn't until, like, a fourth level. And fireball's a third, so, like, ninth level. It, it, it'll be a while before you're really casting your big stuff, but you can kind of see the... I hope, at least, you can kind of see what, what I'm going for so far. Anyway. Uh, infused magic items. So we're going to pick a couple infused items. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom for that. And we're going to choose two. Okay. So, rather than uh, going for a crossbow build as an artificer, which you can a crossbow build for kind of a, a Boba Fett looking thing. I'm actually going for more of a, you're using a one-handed gun, which is in this case a wand, and in Eperon really wands are basically guns. So, enhanced arcane focus rather than uh, repeat, or uh, would be what you'd go for. So, there's a plus one on spell attack rolls, so you're gonna run like a plus six to hit, because you're always gonna be hitting. So, da, 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 da. enhanced arcane focus. And six. 
Well, that's not damage rolls, that's attack rolls. And you get to plus two at a tenth level. And you ignore half cover when you're hitting, aiming at people. I'm going to really quick, repeating shot is what you would use if you're going to go for more of a crossbow build, which you can. I mean, maybe switch your uh, race up to something that gives you a plus two dex, plus one intelligence, if you want to do it that way. Uh, just plus one on attack and damage roll, so you know you do actually do more damage that way. And it ignores the loading property if it has one, though you would have to at that point find a way to become proficient, proficient with heavy crossbows to be able to really run that. Because right now we're running blaster pistol instead of blaster rifle. It's just the difference. Uh, and this build is more blaster pistol. Um, let me see if there's anything. Ill and then there's one other we're going to grab. Do, do, do. I'd go. I'd say radiant weapon. That's sixth level. Uh, enhanced defense would be actually what I'm going to run because you are more of a. Actually, no, 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 no. Where is that one? Because I know he's here. Oh, either enhanced defense, which could work actually, but bag of holding is actually one I I kind of prefer, just because I like having the never-ending uh, bag of. Thi things you can pull from you know just like all right oh i need my guns and my bombs and my shit that's just a personal choice really but you know uh enhanced enhanced armor would actually be probably better i think because you know mad lore and armor is really tough so but that's just me bag of holding or enhanced defense so increase your armor even more and Alright, infused item, right tool for the job, so you're going to be able to build your own weapons, and then, and now, we're getting to the Artificer Specialist. And there are three specialists, you have the Alchemist, which is kind of, you know, potions, obviously, uh, elixirs, that's not what we're going to run. Artillerist, this is what we're going to run, but I'm actually going to explain the other one too real quick, though, because you could actually make a case for running the Battlesmith. He runs with martial weapons, and this is kind of your close-up fighter, because you know the Mandalorians did actually have close-range fighters that fought with the Jedi sometimes. It's just, well, you know, um, unless you have force powers, using a melee weapon in the Star Wars universe is not a great idea. So, generally speaking, they weren't really running it, though you did get Steel Defender and having a little a dog, which doesn't necessarily have to be a dog. It could be a metal anything, as your companion is pretty badass. But, we're going to go Artillerist. Okay, at third level, you get an Eldritch Can- Okay, first of all, you're going to get the- These spells. So, at Artificial level 3, you get Shield and Thunder Wave, which are always known. Both pretty badass, and you just go, Shield! And block, and block all your enemies, like, You know? pretty bad I, I think it's pretty cool like I don't know. I don't know, it's just me um <laughs> and your proficiency in wood carver tools if that's what your weapons made of though you could easily if, if you're in a more of a high high space setting make it like a some kind of uh weapon tool uh weapon toolkit or instead but do, do, do. scorching ray shatter fireball that's where we're getting fireball because the artificer normally does not know fireball at ninth level, you learn Fireball. Okay. At third level, you learn how to create a magical cannon. Using wood carver's tools or smith tools, you can take an action, and that's smith tools would definitely actually be what you'd choose to make your cannon out of. You make a tiny Eldritch Cannon on a horizontal surface in five feet. Small Eldritch Cannon occupies the space. Now, normally when I hear Eldritch Cannon, I hear gun. Though, in this case, I think it actually more refers to a tiny turret. A small, it can, so you need to be like small, or it can be tiny. So I hope you, I hope this is actually in view of the of the of the camera, but I can't quite tell. So oh. um, <laughs> it has a all the ability scores is ten, um, AC of eighteen, so it's really actually very hard to hit, and number of hit points equal to five times your artificer level. So it starts with a fifteen goes up, and you can use Mending to on it, which is a spell you can just cast over and over and over again, to recover 2d6. And once you're 6th level, you can actually create a another thing, a temporary a little construct, 
one of these things that can deliver your spells for you because it acts as a familiar. You can be like, hey, you, deliver this spell to my uh, turrets and heal it. You know? So you don't even have to get close to the turret if you're using it as like a, a shield against your enemies. Um, but, flamethrower. So this is like, it's kind of a tiny thing that hooks onto your arm. So rather than using burning hands to burn to shoot your flamethrower, you can use an actual flamethrower. But you can only use one of these at a time, and it takes and you have to change and it takes like an hour to build, and you have to expend a spell slot. So it, it takes a while to actually refocus these. Generally speaking, I actually think you'd be running the force ballista or the protector, and you'd be throwing it on the ground, using it for cover or uh, using it to like deter your enemies in one area while you're shooting them, shooting them from another. That way you're kind of, you're splitting their fire and you're firing them from a, kind of flanking them, you know? You can flank them by yourself. Okay. Um, okay, and then uh, Arcane Fire. I'm at 5th level. You can turn a, wa a wand, staff, or rod into an Arcane Fire and a, con a conduit for your destructive spells. When you finish a long rest, you can use Woodcarver's tools to carve a special sigils into a wand, staff, or rod and thereby turn it into your Arcane Fire armor. The sigil disappears from the object if you carve the item them into a different item. The sigil otherwise lasts indefinitely. You can use your arcane firearm as a spell casting focus for your artificer spells when you cast a spe artificer spell through the firearm roll a d8 and gain a bonus to one of those spells damage equal to the amount rolled. So um spell through so any time so basically your firebolt at that point is like thoosh, tons of extra damage and that's your blaster pistol which you're pretty much never missing on because you're like plus six bonus and if you're flanking them right you might be able to get a freaking uh you might be able to get some attacks of opportunity plus you know this is a cooperative game so generally speaking you would actually have allies even though you know mandalorians tend to work alone whatever but yeah that's how you're gonna run uh, other than that, the only thing I can really give you is you're going to probably run the soldier background. And that's about it. That 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 is that is an artificer turned into a Mandalorian. <laughs> a Mandalorian turned into an artificer. But, yeah. There are other things, like higher level as you get, but none of them contradict what you're getting turning it into an artificer. And most of it's just kind of flavor texting it might flavor text a few things differently but it's not really flavor text even it's more like phrasing because most of your stuff's mechanical and role playing to make him actually a mandalorian but that's that's how i do him stat wise uh and build wise yeah um yeah I'll... bye let me know what you think yeah